This video is brought to you by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Outdoors Del Marva covers everything outdoors, including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. We're here at the end of Oakley Street in Cambridge, Maryland, in Dorchester County, and as you can see behind me, there are hundreds and hundreds of ducks here. Now, this is a great time of year to be watching wildlife, and we're going to tell you about the canvas back. Plus, the deer season is behind us, and now it's time to find out how hunters fared. Hear from the experts as they crunch the numbers from Delaware's whitetail season. And whether you're a daydreamer or a serious shopper, there's no place to cure the winter blues like the Seaside Boat Show. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. And now, here are Andrew Taws and Captain Willie Dice. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Andrew Taws. And I'm Captain Willie Dice. And thanks for stopping by for another week of adventures. Well, you know, the last few months have produced some amazing waterfowl hunting, Andrew. And although the season is over, it's still prime time for viewing some amazing waterfowl. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Willie. And I think you'll agree some of the most beautiful species out there are canvasbacks. And if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go see a guy now about some ducks. Okay, I'll check in with you later, Andrew. The canvasback is one of the most famous of the Chesapeake's ducks. Now to see them, you can either sit in a cold, wet, freezing blind, or bob around in the waves in a layout boat, or do like I do and stroll down to the end of Oakley Street in Cambridge. The gear is down, the flaps are extended, and they're cleared for landing. But landing spots are at a premium here at a favorite gathering spot for a virtual potpourri of Chesapeake's migratory waterfowl. This annual gathering at the end of Oakley Street not only serves as a rest stop, but also a potential picnic area when people are good enough to bring along some deer corn, like we witnessed last year. Many migratory species are represented here, and it's a great place to watch wildlife practically at arm's length for the fortunate visitor. But the species that always catches our eye are the canvasbacks. This time of year, the plumage is at its absolute best. They have their, the colors are their brightest, and their eyes are red when they're uh, mating this time of year. The Chesapeake has been a, one of the favorite stopovers for canvasbacks on their migration southward. Originally it was because of the vegetation that was in the shallow waters that they dove for. When the vegetation waned, they started eating uh, crustaceans and uh, shellfish and whatnot that are on the bottom, but still types of food that they had to dive for. In their heyday, they came in their hundreds of thousands and they were harvested by market hunters. They were a favorite item on the menus and the, all the cities on the East Coast at this time of year. Well, it's really great to see all these guys up close and in their finest plumage. And we'd like to know a little more about them. So Andrew, I understand you met up with someone who's been studying these waterfowl for years. What'd you learn? Yeah, well, the one thing that I've learned is that there's a little bit more to these canvas backs than meets the eye. I mentioned I had to go see a guy about some ducks. So here with us now is Denny Price with Maryland DNR. Denny, how are you? Good to see you, Andrew. All right, same here. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And uh, tell us a little bit about some, the migratory patterns of these canvas backs. Well, these ducks have traveled quite a, uh, quite a ways. They started off uh, the breeding ground, which is in the prairie potholes in North America. And then they migrate down to uh, Pacific Flyway, Mississippi Flyway, and of course, the Atlantic Flyway, where we are. About half of the canvas backs end up migrating down and wintering in the Chesapeake Bay. All right, Denny, these birds once numbered, you know, probably around a quarter million. You know, the numbers have kind of changed over the years. Tell us about that. Due to market hunting, drought, the lack of food, the populations went from, like you say, almost a quarter of a million down to, in the last 15 years, probably 50 to 90,000. 
Market gunning was a huge industry on the eastern shore. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The market hunters went out, harvested as many ducks as they could, shipped them to Baltimore, Philadelphia, Washington, shipped them in barrels, and it definitely had a, uh, a bad effect on our waterfowl population. Early 1900s, there were laws passed that stopped all of this. Um, but due to droughts and loss of habitats, they didn't bounce back as fast as we were hoping. And right now, they are stable, just a lot lower. All right, Denny, thanks again for all the information. It's very helpful. Enjoyed it. All right, now obviously, Captain Willie has the best seat in the house, so let's go see what's going on. Look at this guy coming. Look at the wake that he's putting up. That's a canvas back steaming in here like that. He has heard that there might be a free lunch up here at the end of the street, and he is steaming in to get a position at the, up the front. And there are others seated at the table as well. The familiar puddle ducks, the mallards with their distinctive green iridescent heads. Widgeons sport an unmistakable white crests, while the bluebills and the redheads, well, the names speak for themselves. This place is not only a feast for the ducks, but also a feast for the eyes. You have to hurry, though, to get here to the end of Oakley Street. Now, this is a great time of year to watch wildlife. But remember, these guys are just passing through, so don't miss them. Get outdoors, Delmarva. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, winter weather can keep the surf fishermen indoors, but that's okay. We'll catch up with this local club and learn how to tie one on. But first, did you know? The canvas back hen will lay a clutch of approximately five to 11 greenish colored eggs in mid-May. What is the average incubation period for the eggs? Is it A, 25, B, 35, or C, 45 days? The answer when we come back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva. Presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. Wink Sporting Goods. And Sussex Outdoors. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? The canvas back hen will lay a clutch of eggs in mid-May. If you said the incubation period is A, 25 days, well then you sure know your ducks. Did you know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Andrew Taws, and with temperatures getting colder and snow still out here on the docks, it may have been the final straw for local anglers, and I'm sure a lot of them have probably hung up their rods and reels by now. But just because you don't have any bait out there in the water doesn't mean you can't get hooked. I recently met up with a group of fishermen whose passion for fly fishing knows no off-season. These fishermen are not gathered here to go cast flies. They're here instead to tie some flies. I'm cutting the loops a little bit off center. We first met with the saltwater fly anglers of Delaware last year. Nearly every weekend of the winter months, they meet up at Lewis Harbor Marina Bait and Tackle to tie flies, with the goal being to use their own creations to reel in the fish once it gets a bit warmer. And that's what fly tying is about. It sort of fills that gap when it's too cold to fish. It's something we can do during the winter when the fishing slows down. And by no means do you need to be a master fly tire. Bruce Peterson just joined the club and is learning that like anything else, it takes a little bit of practice. They tell me the, the more you work on it, the better I get. <laughs> and the better these fly tires get, the more helpful they can be for the new guys. There doesn't seem to be any pressure when a crowd gathers to see how these masters of hooks, lines, and polar fiber create their masterpieces. That's the other part of the club, is sharing the information. Teaching the tools, the proper applications of the tools, different materials. So I asked Ron for a demonstration. He's going to show me how to tie a bullet head darter. And it's tied, I'm tying it on a number one hook. He begins by wrapping the shank of the hook with thread. After I get the hook wrapped with the thread, we put a mono loop on. The purpose of the mono loop 
is to prevent the polar fiber, which I'll tie on in the next step, from wrapping around the hook shank. Secure that with a bit of good old crazy glue. To make sure that it stays in position. With polar fiber, it has to be combed out, wrapped on. And to make the fly more visible, it needs a little flash. Anywhere between four to six strands of crystal flash. Also give it the flash underwater so that the fish can see it. Then we also use a gold flash of blue material. Trim that off and leave it about an eighth of an inch longer than the actual length of the tail on it. Next is another layer of flash called a fluorescent estaz. The reason for chartreuse is it's more visible in, when you get into the depths of water. It shows up much better than many of the other colors we use. Ron ties the S-Taz off and goes back for some more polar fiber. This has to be combed out. Next, he separates the fibers. Sort of like forming the mustache. So when we fold it back over the hook, it's even. And that is tied down. Tie it off. You can tie with your fingers, but Ron finds using a whip finisher to be much easier. And finally, some more crazy glue. Keep it from coming unwrapped. There we have the bullet head darter. And of course, plans are already being formulated for this latest creation. Hopefully it'll be responsible for catching some small tarp. For the new guys, watching and learning from the experts makes waiting out the winter a little easier. That's the first one I did. It's good. And it, you, can, you can see it doesn't have a nose to it. And then this one, I had a gentleman come over and show me how to put the, to get the nose set up on it. So today I'm back trying to do a, do a little bit better. I just enjoy creating the flies. Yeah, the, the satisfaction of catching a fish with something that you've created is. Um, it's the next step. So while some anglers may be going stir crazy waiting to set their hooks, instead they may want to consider spending the winter wrapping them. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, deer season may be behind us, but now it's time to crunch the numbers. Find out where hunters in the first state had their best season ever. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Andrew Taws. Now that it's February, deer season is pretty much behind us, so we decided to take a trip up to Delaware and talk to our friend Joe Rogerson here at Denrec. Joe, how you doing? Very good. Nice to see you. So tell us a little bit about the harvest this year. Here it might have been the best on record. For some areas of the state, it was the best we've had. Uh, so deer season wrapped up on February 2nd. Uh, last year, Delaware hunters managed to harvest 13,302 deer, which is our eighth all-time highest harvest. But in Newcastle and Kent counties, Delaware hunters harvested the most deer in those two areas than we've ever had before. Sussex County, on the other hand, was down a little bit. It was down about 8.5% from last year's harvest. Sussex County hunters took around 6,500 deer. So Newcastle and Kent counties, though, set all-time highs for their harvest. All right, Joe, so as you're taking into account, you know, the information from the harvest this year, you know, what can you tell us about um, blue tongue? A lot of people may have some concerns, you know, stuff they found, you know, during the season. What can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, blue tongue is a viral infection. The real name for it is epizootic hemorrhagic disease, or EHD, but a lot of hunters do refer to it as blue tongue. It's a viral infection that's spread by a midge. Um, and it can be lethal, fatal to the deer if they contract this viral infection. This last year was a bad year as far as number of reported dead deer to us by the public. And we're in the process now of, you know, we overall seen what the harvest numbers were like. And now we're going through the data to see what impacts we might have in those areas where we were getting all those EHD reports now. And that information will be available very shortly. And Joe, uh, we're here, last time we were here, you were out taking uh, some samples for chronic wasting disease, you know, also CWD. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, we're finished collecting our samples this year now that the hunting season's over. We collected about 650 samples. Um, they're all collected, bottled up. We're just getting them ready now to send them off to the lab for analysis and get the results back in a couple months. 
We've been sampling since 2002, and all of our samples have been negative. You know, we don't know the results from this season sampling. We hope and expect them to come back negative, but we won't know for sure for a couple months. All right, well, Joe, sounds like a good season for the white-tailed deer here in Delaware, and uh, love to get in touch with you again when we get some more information. We'd love to have you guys back up here. Thank you. All right, our pleasure. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva. Prepare your shopping list and start thinking spring. We'll see what's new with our friends at the Seaside Boat Show. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Mike Parker, and there's a big event happening this weekend in Worcester County. Still time to get out here to the annual Ocean City Berlin Optimist Club Seaside Boat Show on 40th Street at the Convention Center. And when you do, stop by and see all of the new products that'll get you geared up for spring. Make sure to stop by and see our friends with Shorts Marine. And joining us right now is Kelly Rotz with Shorts Marine. Kelly, how's it going? Welcome back, Mike. All right, well, we always love to see this huge display of products that you have, one of the largest here at the show. Tell me what you've got. Well, we do everything from personal watercraft, aluminum boats, family runabouts, pontoons, jet boats, we have it all. Obviously, you guys deal with superior products and you're also known for superior service. Yes, 60 years that we've been around now, we have 10 certified factory uh, technicians and six master techs on staff all the time. Well, Kelly, this Sea-Doo GTX 260 Limited really brings back some memories. I know personally these things can fly. We had some fun on them. Still fly-by-wire, has an intelligent brake reversing system, and an independent suspension. Spring is almost here. Oh, yeah, Kelly. I have found the spot that I don't need to move from all season here aboard this Bennington pontoon boat. The name Bennington exudes quality, but that goes far beyond just luxury. Absolutely. Bennington has unprecedentedly put a seven-year bumper-to-bumper warranty on their boats now. If a radio goes bad at year seven, it, it is covered. And with this Evan Rudy Tech 225 on the back, this is not your grandfather's pontoon. Well, everybody knows Shorts Marine because of boats, but you guys also have the division called Shorts Archery. So when you're walking around the convention center this weekend, make sure and stop by and see that selection of products too. So from the best pontoon boats to jet boats and personal watercraft, Kelly, Shorts Marine didn't forget a thing here at the Seaside Boat Show. Thanks for coming back again this year. And remember, eight consecutive years, we're in the top 100 boating magazines list. Shorts Marine, they really mean it when they say they've got everything but the water. Still time to check out the Ocean City Berlin Optimist Club Seaside Boat Show here at the Convention Center on 40th Street through Sunday. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Delmarva viewer pictures are sponsored by Shorts Marine. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. Wink Sporting Goods. And Sussex Outdoors. All right, Andrew, before we get to this week's viewer videos and pictures, we want to take a minute here to preview a story that you're working on for next week's show. Yeah, that's right. We went out on the Isle of Wight Bay out here with the Assateague Coast Keeper in search of a little bit of winter wildlife. And at this time of year, there are all types of birds and other wildlife out here on the bay, but we were in search of one in particular, and that was seals. You have to tune in next week to see how we did. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it, but ecotourism here in this part of Worcester County something you can enjoy all year round, even in the dead of winter. And on to those pictures. Let's begin with a video sent in by our friends Tim and Laurie Stuklik of Milton. This is a video from a trail cam in Georgetown. Well, this piebald white-tailed deer is an eye-catcher all its own, but after a few minutes, check it out. Here comes a friend, a raccoon to, shall we say, share the spotlight. Eight-year-old Bryce Richens of Ocean Pines ended a recent youth day with his first duck, 
a green winged teal. Bryce was hunting around Snow Hill with Uncle Greg Steen. And we always appreciate pictures of those dogs working the waterfowl too. And Tammy Geiger Massey said in this shot of Diesel showing off his retrieving skills on this snowy day during the January duck season. Well, Andrew, it's always an adventure as we're hanging out here to wrap up the show in West Ocean City. We, we even came across a, uh, a mystery dog that came to get a little camera time. Good boy, huh? Good boy. So if uh, this is your dog and you're watching, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and for Captain Willie Dykes and Mike Parker, I'm Andrew Taws reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. <laughs>